And so we know that it's not necessarily due to the physical aspect of what's happening within the body, but it's more of that mental aspect of what we've trained the brain to believe and to feel. Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we're talking about why do I always feel like I need to stretch my hamstrings? I have chronically tight hamstrings. What the heck is going on and what can I do? Now, before we dive into this feeling of chronically tight hamstrings and what you need to do about it, I just want to remind you, please hit the subscribe if you haven't yet. Tell your friends about it as well, because we talk about so many different pains and diagnoses and things that you can really do. We break down what current research is saying, what current exercises are really best. And we also have individual videos on just showing pains and exercises and things to continue to help your body. So I hope you don't miss out. Subscribe, comment below if you have recommendations or suggestions on other topics. So why do I feel like I have chronically tight hamstrings? I stretch them, I roll them, I whip them out. (laughs) I can't seem to do anything to get that tension out of my hamstrings. Yes. It's talked about all the time. I get questions about it constantly and people are always telling me I foam roll all the time. I stretch all the time. I don't know why they're always tight. First of all, breaking down this idea of tightness and this (laughs) this chronic sensation that we're feeling within the body. And I think it's important to point out that this feeling is just that. It's more of a feeling. It's not necessarily a contraction. The evidence has shown that say a person has lost a limb or they had to have an amputation or whatever reason they might still have that feeling and that sensation of tightness happening within the hamstring or the joint or whatever the limb that's gone and so we know that it's not necessarily due to the physical aspect of what's happening within the body but it's more of that mental aspect of what we've trained the brain to believe and to feel and usually our brain goes into a tightness mode when it feels like it needs to protect we're going to talk a little bit about how we can start to program something for longer term you know reprogramming of that muscle programming that we can get into more lengthened positions with tension on that muscle specifically the hamstring um, and not feel that tightness or not have our body want to protect and grab in and put more tension into that hamstring. So let's start to break some of this stuff down. One of the questions is, should I foam roll? Like, is that really going to be the thing that's helping? And I think it always goes back to it depends. (laughs) And that's, I know, so hard to say, but there's no one answer. If you've been foam rolling and you still feel like you have chronically tight hamstring, probably not the answer for you, right? If it's not making change, like it's then it's not doing much. Or not the only th- thing. Like, yes. Or you should add something else in because yeah. you know, we did an entire episode on foam rolling and what it's doing. And, and when you put foam rolling in or when you kind of put that pressure into the muscle, you can foam roll the entire portion of the hamstring. You can foam roll your medial and your lateral hamstrings because we have hamstrings inside kind of on the outside. inside and outside of the back of our thigh. And you can foam roll all the way up to the proximal portion where it attaches kind of in the bottom of our booty. And when you do that, you're kind of just changing the input from your brain Mm -hmm. down into that hamstring. You might be modulating some pain, so pain might seem to come down a little bit. The tension might seem to come down a little bit. You might seem to have a little more freedom in how you move that hamstring. So it can do some great things, but that effect is just short term. Yeah. You know, we're talking like 24 to 48 hours, you're going to maybe have that input slightly modulated or changed. So what do we do during that time? Yeah. You know, what do we do after we do the foam rolling to then start more so reprogramming and reinforcing that reprogramming? And that's where we kind of always come back around to loading. So there is a test that I've shown on social media before. What is the difference between a hamstring stretch and a nerve stretch? Yeah. And a lot of times people are loading into their nerves more than they are into their hamstrings. And this has been taught to us through like growing up. I mean, I can remember in grade school, it's like, okay, sit out with your legs in front of you and pull your toes back toward your face. If we're trying to force our toes back, that is putting stress and tension on our nerve, not our hamstring, which is why we might feel things out into our calf, which is why we might feel something down into our foot. You know, it's not necessarily that we're stretching those tissues 
issues because it's not a lot of tension on the stretch. Yeah. It's more so that we're tensioning the nerve. And so we have to be really careful with how we're stretching as well. So this is where if you did just foam roll, if that is a part of your practice, which we're not saying it has to be, but foam rolling is great because like Dom said, it's going to aid in that tissue relaxation right so we're going to get that relaxation of the tissue one thing that you can do immediately after is then start to glide and put some tension through the nerve so not a sustained hamstring stretch but this is what we call active hamstring stretch i show this in like a lot of my <laughs> plans on gen health mm -hmm. where you just laying down on your back you grab the back of your leg and then you just kind of pump your leg up and down don't worry about the foot flexing back towards you if you just keep your foot pointed toward the ceiling to start you just kind of are gently starting to put tension through that nerve and then if you need a little bit more that's when you can start to put that toe back towards your face just gently again for nerve tensioning flossing we don't want to put so much force through it or hold it for a sustained period of time we're really just trying to get that mobility of the nerve through the muscle tissue a little bit better to glide and move on top of that, I like doing the laying down on your back and straightening the knee one because, again, you have your hip flexed already, mm -hmm. right? And then you're straightening your knee. So you already have that proximal part of the hamstring in the lengthened position. And then when you're kicking, then you're kind of completing by lengthening at the knee in the more distal part of the hamstring versus mm -hmm. if you're standing where your knee is already kind of straight and then you kind of hinge at the hips or kind of go into that anterior pelvic tilt and hinge at the hips. Then we're kind of almost doing that in reverse where the knee is straight and then we're flexing the hip. So you can kind of compare those two laying down on your back and kicking your leg straight versus standing and then hinging at the hip. Where do you feel that hamstring stretch? Are you feeling it in slightly different spots? Do you feel like one of those is more where you feel tight? Mm. You know, that could help direct maybe which stretch or which kind of active hamstring stretch you're going to use. Awareness is everything. Awareness is what's going to help with that motor sensory input that we're feeling. And especially when we're laying down and doing like the nerve flossing, one thing that's so important important, especially when it comes to feeling chronically tight, is that we pair that with breath. We never want to be holding our breath through exercise, especially when we're talking about something that's already chronically tight. We want to be consciously breathing. So using that breath in from that low rib cage and nice and slow out. So that's going to help to get more movement of that tissue that's going to help to get more relaxation of that overall hamstring so that when we go into something like loading, we feel a little bit better. How do we start to load that hamstring? Mm -hmm. How do we get active loading through the entire portion of the hamstring? And a good way to kind of test this out, especially on the ground where you might feel a little safer is using bridges. So you can just kind of have your heels tucked a little bit closer to your bottom to start, do a bridge and go back down. And then how can you scoot those feet out just a little bit? Because as we scoot the feet out and we straighten our knees just a little bit during the bridge, you're going to feel those hamstrings come in more and more. And how far away can you get your feet from you without your toes coming off the ground too much? If you kind of just start by tucking that tailbone under and then you're going to be thinking of pressing through that heel and lifting well then we're going to get a little bit more contraction and awareness mm -hmm. through the entire length of that muscle rather than just behind the knee and lifting the knees up to the ceiling so really thinking tuck that tailbone feel the hamstring from the top from the bottom and then finding the different lengths. And then kind of the next progression of this versus kind of slowly stepping out, I guess there's a couple different progressions. You can just do it where you go up into a bridge and they're slowly just stepping your feet out. So you kind of walk, it's a bridge walkout where you're walking them out as you're holding up in that bridge and then walk back in. You can also do it with towels or with sliders where you just have your feet or your heels on the sliders and slowly slide out into that or go up in the bridge, slide out and then slide back in. And I think it depends what we're going for there. So what's great about like the slide out is then now we're going to start to build that hamstring through that eccentric lengthening phase. So now if we lift into that bridge as high as we can with that bottom tucked under and then slowly let those feet come out, trying not to let the bottom touch the ground until the very end, that's where we get that load through the hamstring as it lengthens out. So that's a great one to start to reprogram and because now we're finding that length of that hamstring but we're doing it nice and slow as we kind of and lengthen. it's probably great to start there before you add the portion where you pull the feet back in yes. during the slide and then i think to your point versus the walkout that's kind of great for the next phase of what we want to talk about yes. which is like that lumbo pelvic control yeah that's because what I was every say. time you lift a foot up our pelvis is going to want to dip yeah. to that side so with that hamstring actually 
activation during the bridge walkout, we're actually also needing to become more aware of what's our core doing? How is you know our lumbar region, our low abdomen and our pelvis holding that control? Can we do that walkout without our hips kind of tottering side to side? Another place that we can't forget to strengthen and stabilize in is in standing because that's a lot of where people are feeling that tension and tightness. So it's learning how to hinge again, which is just that bending motion from the hip, but do it with some intention of, can I feel that top part of my hamstring? So if I reach right below where my sit bone is, so if I feel my sit bone and I feel right underneath it, so I put my hand right at the top of that hamstring, usually doing this in a staggered stance is a little easier because with that foot that's in front of that staggered stance, you can kind of think of drawing that heel back. And as you hip hinge and just kind of lean forward, as you draw that heel back, you should kind of feel a little bit of tension start to pop into your finger. And that's the top of the hamstring. If you can't quite feel that yet, that's where it's to take time and practice to really bring awareness to that top of the hamstring so we're not just activating in the bottom but we're activating throughout the length so that we're really maximizing that awareness to decrease that sensitivity of that feeling of tightness that staggered deadlift can be an amazing way to start to feel that activation and then that's where progressing into some sort of single leg rdl or almost like a mm -hmm. airplane type exercise where you are on one leg you kind of let your opposite leg go behind you and feel that tension through the entire portion, feel the stability of your pelvis. Like, am I keeping my pelvis relatively stable? We don't want it to be as much of a balance exercise initially because we're trying to focus on the hamstring. Yeah, so, so use a wall, use to Just use a wall, use a chair yeah. and focus on how can I feel that tension in that hamstring as I'm going into this single leg RDL position and then coming back up and kind of pulling through the heel, keeping that booty kind of tucked under so mm -hmm. that you're activating through the entire length of the hamstring. And then we can go into like the lumbopelvic support more so in that single leg when we do like the airplane rotations. If I let one hip drop, and then I open one hip up. You can even try to feel a little bit more hamstring activation. If you stand about a foot away from the wall and you push one leg into the wall, add that leg that's pushing into the wall. When you hip hinge and then you drop your hip and you rotate, you really get a lot in those hamstrings because one leg's kind of kicking up the wall. So we're trying to initiate that hamstring. The other leg's pulling back into the wall, into that hip hinge. And so we're getting that hamstring activation and then we're moving through the pelvis to kind of find that better lumbopelvic control, awareness, all that kind of stuff. So, and these are just examples. Like we've yeah. named a few examples of exercises. There's so many that you can do. The more awareness that you have, the more strength that you have throughout the full length of the hamstring, the better you're going to have control. And I think the progression though is the thing that is important to focus yeah. on because again you can fill in any stage of that progression all the way from laying on your back and starting to dis distinguish between nerve tension and hamstring tension. Mm -hmm. Then starting to just get that hamstring mobility both laying down and focusing on okay where am I feeling it then coming into standing and can you get that same hamstring tension in standing continuing that breathing so you're using breath as your ally starting to then load in maybe some laying down positions on your back using bridges coming up and loading where you have both feet on the ground and then progressing into like more dynamic single leg activities that's kind of a great progression to start that reprogramming to get that hamstring feeling okay I am strong I have the length and I can do this in great functional positions. Thanks for tuning in for another PT Pearl. Please comment below. Are you somebody who has hamstring tightness? Are there things that you have found helpful? Did we say anything that resonated with you? Please share this video out. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos. And of course, we'll see you next time.